Callum from the Bolex Engineering, one half of the Bolex Engineering. Des isn't a camera guy, so he's back at the workshop working on something else. Yeah. And we're here with the uh, TW Steel All in the Blood Energica Eva. So this project was part of the All in the Blood documentary, which we enjoyed last Sunday yeah. afternoon. Uh, and it's TW Steel's bike that the com commission for this year's Tobacco Doc Show. That's correct, yeah. Now, you're looking a little less tired than you were on Sunday, because I know it was a, a real feat to get this done. Yeah. I came to see you about three, four weeks ago, and there was just a motor sitting on a bench and nothing else. Mm. It was like that, really, how, up until the I, last I don't minute. understand how you got it done, but for, for, for anyone viewing who hasn't seen an Enjica, we'll, we'll chuck some still in, uh, images up, but Essentially, under here is a great big battery that looks like a carry-on suitcase mm. with a motor at the back. Yeah. And we've got we've got some stat. We'll put all the the boring geeky stats at the bottom. But it's what 107 kilowatt motor, which is the equivalent of 145 100. horsepower-ish, yep. uh, 200 newton meters of torque, um, and there's the range thing that people talk about is 125 miles but yeah I mean that's that's an Ergica's sort of um, spec that they give it official stats yeah. um, and I think they've been very successful with this bike it's you know it's been um, it's a it's a great bike when it came into us you know we were really pleased with, to work on it as a base and yeah, um, yeah and it was perfect for this style you know it, it, essentially it was like taking a Ducati or something you know a fairly exotic um, and is it, sports is bike. It still, it's still a trellis steel trellis frame underneath yeah mounted around this big battery motor unit yeah and then everything else is is you isn't it that's it yeah i mean it was there was a fair amount of plastic body work on the on the standard bike so um we were quite intrigued you know having not worked on an electric bike before to see mm. what was under the tank and everything and um so what, what's what's under here so there's a big power controller under there yeah. and, it, and really that that tank i mean it's a fairly large tank or tank skin um, but that is really tight over what's underneath. You know, there, there is a lot going on under so there. So that, that big module that I saw sits That's here. it, yeah, and that just distributes the power from the, from the battery to the motor, and there's also some ECUs there that, that um, deal with the charging system and also the power delivery and, and throttle and stuff. So, right. um, yeah, there's quite a lot under there. There's also is the, the batteries. The batteries are air-cooled, the power controller's water-cooled, so there's a little water pump for that. Um, so the, the, the power, the control unit is water cooled? Yes, yeah, so right. we've actually got a cooler and that, that actually started us off with this, this design, but right. um, the cooler's in the front there, like you'd have... Oh, a this little thing, so just a traditional, yeah. you know, yeah, thin and, and foil... When we came in, it had a big sort of water pump on the side here, so we, we relocated that and, um, and that's now sitting snugly just behind this part here. Right. Um, Actually, they were the t that and the ABS, which, which sat the other side, they were mm -hmm. the two components we had to move. And, and once we'd done that, we sort of stood back and we, we looked at we had the perfect base, really. It was, it was, as far as electric bikes go, it was fairly sleek. Um, it sat you, really you nicely. It's fairly sleek. I mean, they're, they're a pretty mm. girthy bike. Yet yeah, you've, I don't know, when, when you've got a sec down, if you come around here, I mean, that is super narrow. That, that's, yeah. that's Ducati narrow. That's, you'd never get an, an R6 that narrow, would you? No, we had to be really quite smart with, some, with the lines on this bike to really reduce that width because actually when you, when you take off that lower fairing the battery is really wide and it, yeah. you know like a conventional bike it tends to narrow down towards the bottom but on this you know it is wide all the way to the bottom and um, certain areas of design we really worked on just for example the tank here just mm -hmm. putting this little recess in it really reduces kind of that that width um, yeah because in, in raw rally when i came to see that 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 looked massive with no yeah. paint on it it was big yeah it. and that is trick of the paint as well and yeah and just just the way we do certain things um, and, and the the shapes here so your, your, your scallops here yeah and the way you've um got the bulges on the side here and these ducts there this is all in your head as you're working or in a sketch beforehand how do you get so we yeah we do, do a basic sketch i mean like i said earlier with the with the cooler this is where this design all started really um there was we knew that we wanted to carry two lines off of the cooler so one of those is this top line that runs straight into the knee hole mm -hmm. and the bottom line would carry through right into the tail and that kind of just set that that kind of nice base for us to start um we knew we wanted to split the top and bottom part of the fairing um and that's what this is the little um, intakes here help with cooling, but they also, again, help reduce the width. So you can just about see the edge of the battery there oh, yeah. sticking through. But, yeah. um, you know, the, the width of this fairing could be this wide, but just by putting this opening in, it reduces that mm -hmm. width and actually gives a nice, interesting nice sort of shape detail. there. Um, 
and, I, and, it, and it helps reduce that bulge at the bottom. Exactly, yeah. The yeah, and that, and that line really carries through from the top of the frame right through through this and, and underneath there. And you go straight into the aluminium work, don't you? From your design that you've got on your head, you and Des yeah. just get big sheets of alley, anneal them, and then start beating them around. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, we probably spend I don't know, two, three, three or four days maybe design, you know, we, and this is all 2D design, you know, we do a lot, fair amount of sketches, we might move that onto Illustrator or something. Did you cut, cut out card and bend that and... Bits and pieces, and we bits, do do but... some of that, um, but sometimes we just, once we've, we really discuss it a lot, and once we really know, we just kind of jump in and get, in, get into the alley, so really we, what we like to get is a top tank skin, so yeah. just this main top piece pulled through, um, so that starts giving us the lines of the bike, and then it's... It's kind of just a case of filling in the holes, you know, once, you, once you've got this top piece in, you know, we, we work on the front area and then, then we added these, these um, sort of recesses into the tank and then it was onto the knee holes. But we were always very conscious of where this line was starting from the cooler and making sure that everything was following itself through. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and then the end result, you know, all these lines run perfectly through and we had to make some adjustments for the rear subframe to make sure that we could get one the seat height how we wanted it but two again those lines running through and I think that's what makes a really well balanced balanced bike really. And the, the thing that loads of people pointed out at the weekend is that if you hadn't had your logo on there and the TWC and all in the blood mm. logos went on there and you said oh this is Energica's latest you know, um, moto e-bike yeah people would have probably believed it that what for people who haven't worked with Ali before and haven't built bikes before, how hard is it to get all of these um, lines perfect and get all of the, the mounting of the bodywork as good as you get it? Is that just, uh, it's just hours a, and hours of pain and is, try, yeah, I mean, trial not, and error? I guess early days it might have been a bit pain. We don't, we, we kind of, we've got some real good techniques for it now, some good, good ways that we like to mount things and how to get to that mounting point sort of mm -hmm. thing. Um, but there's no way around it, it's lots and lots of time. You know, it does take, to get the perfect gap, it's people who have worked on cars and things before, they know what it's like with a door gap or yeah. a wing gap or something like that. It really does take a lot of time um, to get that. So, um, but yeah, I mean, just starting with a flat sheet is sort of, um, you have to be quite creative and forward thinking to get to, get to this design, yeah. really. I mean, you, you probably can't see on camera, but you know, even, even just feel it, yeah. there's no difference side to side there. The, the gaps are exactly the same. There's yeah. no overhang one side to the other. It's, it's as close to perfect as, yeah, as I think stuff's you can really get with a handmade product. Yeah. yeah, we really want to get that right. You know, it's, um, yeah, to me, those, those details really make the difference. And, and it's all rubber mounted as well, so we're going to get no fracturing or anything like that. Um, and have you got your signature pop-off seat? They do, you... yeah. A little quick release catches just in here. Little... Oh, I think I tucked the wire out of the way earlier, <laughs> sorry. It's all right. So this is where you, you plug your charger in. Yeah. And what was that, sort of three hours or something, two and a half hours, three hours Yeah, I think about up? three hours for 100%, yeah. Okay. And then what have we got what, under here? So nothing really up under the tail, but the, this is a fan here that, that blows air over the charging system. We've also got an air outlet in the back so that, of the tail. So that, that vents out the back there to keep the charger cool. That's it, yeah. Cool. And that was interesting as well, because obviously with us, we try and clean these bikes up as much as we can. and we don't normally have a big charging unit to deal with in the tail and coming back to that slimming those slimming techniques we, we worked on you know that that's where we've sort of split the colors and we've got this little overhang on the tail here and and then again that little recess like the top of the tank we have here yeah which helps reduce that bulkiness of the um the lower charger cover um yes yeah, so all those little things i think we managed to sort of we actually quite enjoyed I, I really like this design now originally i thought oh, the charger is quite a difficult thing to work around but I think it really adds to the design, you know, and I think that's what we kind of... Yeah, so you could have ended up with a, either a really bulbous tail or one that was a bit too street fighter and, exactly. and pointy. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, again, the same, same with the seat. Des has um, worked his magic on magic, this yeah. again, yeah, and our, um, our normal seat pan system with, with all the rubbers need, and... Um, I need some of those. Where nice plates. Where from? They're 3M, they are. Are they? Yeah. Fancy. Yeah, so they're... Um, yeah, that's come out really nice. And all pro belt fixings, again, as we normally do. And viewers, those two are to go back in. They're not missing on. Yeah, I ran out of on purpose. <laughs> we, we did finish this on a real tight deadline, so it was. Um... Yeah, no, we, we we must add that you know on Sunday when we went to the uh, the, uh, the premiere of Gareth's film All in the Blood, and, and then this bike was unveiled later on. Uh, Callum and his dad and Des and and also Gemma had been yeah, working until yeah. six o'clock in the morning. 
Callum's mum was ferrying food back and forth to the workshop. So it was a, it was a whole week of that, wasn't it? Yeah, 6 a.m. We, finishes. I had to, to rein in just done. every bit of help I possibly could because there was no way around it. We had to be there with this bike. Yeah. And, um, and it was seven weeks from delivery to delivering the finished bike. Exactly that, yeah. And on, on the enough, Monday, we were literally, um, there's some pictures on my Instagram actually, but we had Tom from Autohurst down and we were, we were finishing off all these edges on the frame, on the fairing here. Yeah. Um, so the end of Monday, this was still a complete bike in Bear Alley. Mm. Um, and then Tuesday, I think it was Tuesday morning or maybe Monday night, I can't remember now, that we did the full strip down and just went full out. So full from added Tuesday to Sunday, you had to paint it, paint, refit powder it. powder coat, Cerakote, chain, brakes, brake lines, bleed brakes, yeah. you know, all, all the things that you'd have to do on a full, you know, a build, you know building it back up. So that was um, pretty full on. The last night, that Sunday, my dad was there in the, in the corner polishing yeah, the panels. He was show, he showed me pictures, <laughs> yeah. And you all looked pretty broken on Sunday. Yeah, I felt pretty broken, yeah. I'm just about recovering from that now, so. And the, the parts that you did, you did bolt on, run us through those. The, the brake, the front brake, because it, it, it feels weird. I had to sit on the bike early and you, and you go for the clutch. There's obviously, yeah. there's obviously nothing there. So the braking system is st standard Brembo's that are on the, the Energy stock, but yep. the mass cylinder and lever is? That's Magura, yeah, that's their HC3. So that's their sort of top of the range mass cylinder. That's, um, it's a really, really nice unit that we're, we're fitting to quite a lot of our bikes now. And, um, and it's adjustable ratio as well as reach, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah, really lightweight. Just, it just feels really nice. I like the Magura stuff, so. Um, and they've just started doing this in black, so and, and, and that oh, actually... shows you the anodising job, doesn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah, it really, um, it suited this build perfectly. And the throttle is, it's an electric bike, so obviously it's just going to be a, a, a switch, but... Yeah. It's really nice, isn't it? It is. <laughs> <laughs> I wish normal throttles felt that yeah. positive and uh, snappy. And that's a domino one, isn't it? That's it, yeah. Yeah, and that's part of an Energica sort of standard, standard setup. Um, and what, the, the clocks, that's a standard... Yeah, Is that that's a TFT display. Yeah, that's How do we really get nice. that on? We'll, just, we'll just switch that on. We've got the ignition down here. That's a colour display, which is really nice. So these clip-ons look like Renthal's, but they're not, are they? They're, they're not. that that brand that we can't pronounce. Giles or Gills? Yeah. Gills. G I W L E S. Whatever they are, yeah, they're really Google nice, it. lightweight. Yeah. Um, yeah, nice, nice design clip-ons. So yeah, we we fit those and. Um, and then yeah, you're just going to point out the top yoke there. That yep. was um, Danny from Fast Tech. He always does a. A really nice job of art. And did you adjust the geometry at all, or is it just stock? A, exactly, a stock, and um, right. you have to be careful with the clearance between the, the front wheel and the battery. So does a nice job, doesn't he? Really nice. Yes, yeah, it, it looks nice and lightweight. That and um, hidden bolts and everything. That's it. Yeah. So then we've got uh, forged wheels from Dymag. Yeah, the, the UP7X model, I think they call that. Really nice, lightweight. Yeah, really nice finish. So, um, yeah, we've used those a few times on our builds now. We um, yeah, really like those. Um, Pirelli Supercoursers. Yeah. Nice sticky tyres, um, yeah, give us that nice track look and feel. And that, that doesn't look like a stock sprocket to me. That That's a talon sprocket, yeah. Right. Dynamax will supply that for us. So um, that comes with the wheel set? Yeah, yeah, you just give me a sprocket size. And stock swing arm? Stock swing arm, but that's had some nice preparation and, and Cerakote by Flying Tiger coatings. Right, okay, um, and that's that super, super thin that's it, ceramic yeah. coating that you can put on a nut and a bolt and it'll still wind that's together. That's the one, yeah, the fancy really stuff. nice finish. And the, um, did they do any other coating on, on the bike? They did the front calipers as well. Cerakoted calipers. That's it, yeah, with a nice right. white inlay. They, they do that finish on there, so yeah, it's got a nice look. This rear set looks all lonely on its own without it a shifter. Yeah, that's Rizoma. Yeah, that's Rizoma. Yeah, it was perfect for us, so we just adapted the, the mounting on there. And um, yeah, Rizoma did the rear sets, the bar ends, so the brake reservoir pot. And uh, the forks are Marzocchi. Yeah. Standard left them alone. We left those alone, yeah, yeah. mainly because of time actually. But but they, you know they're perfectly set up for this bike and um, yeah, and they look great in the, the gold and the nice finish. So. so if you did another one, would you maybe speak to the Maxton guys and get a, a fork for yeah, it? Yeah, we were going to do fork internals and, and recolor the tubes actually. But yeah, again, time, time doesn't always give you that. But but you did the Maxton shock. Yeah, yeah, that's Maxton's a beefy really looking shock. unit, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it's a really nice unit. R I think they call that the RT10. Um, is that their top of the line? Yeah, and that's, it's just. You know, Maxim do they do a really nice job of building a, a bespoke unit. They, you know, they really understand the, what you're doing with the bike, and um, yeah, so they build that for us, and um, yeah, it suits the bike perfectly. So ordinarily, we, we'd have a chat about the bike, then we'd go outside and start it up and see what it sounds <laughs> yeah. like. But not only is it electric, and there isn't much noise to come out of it, but it's not running just yet. Or not just yet. No, as I said, you know, we've finished finished it such last minute. Um, We've just got to do all the little, little final little pieces and um, yeah, before we sort of 
take it out for the first test ride. So uh, that'll be coming up in the next few days. And yeah, well, we were just chatting to Gareth, weren't we? That mm. might be a sort of March time brand yeah. tattoo sort of thing. And we know that one of these in stock trim about two, what would be three years, two, three years ago, uh, did the TT, did a full lap of the TT in stock trim, just with the lights taken out and a couple yeah. of bits lock wide, 74 mile an hour av average, which doesn't sound loads compared mm. to what the, the guys on internal combustion engines are doing. But I think if we could get someone who can pedal one of those around that course to yeah. come down to Brands Hatch and give this a whirl. Absolutely, yeah. That'd be I mean, quite I'd, a good thing, wouldn't it? We'd love to see this, you know, really be put through its paces, you know. It's, um, it's certainly got the performance there to back it up. So, yeah, it'd be, um, it'd be good to see that so, go. So now you're sold on electric bikes. <laughs> well, are you going to be doing some more? Semi sold, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, I, I actually, I loved building this. It was really, a really interesting project to do something different. Um, I love both, you know, I'd like to do more electric and do more of what we normally do as well. So it's, um, but certainly the Energica as a base was, you know, it was really nice to work on. So yeah, and we'll you've been see. to the factory, haven't you? And you've met the guys out there in yeah. Italy. Lovely factory, really nice clean space. And you know, they're doing a really nice job. So it's- Whereabouts um, are they? In Northern Just Italy? down the road from, from Ducati, funny enough. Yeah they're, not, yeah, they're not far, I forget, what's the area mod, is that? Uh, with Bologna, so. Bologna, yeah, it's, it's so yeah. Maybe take this round Mugello? Ah, oh, it'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, I'd like to do that, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah, get someone decent to ride well, it. I don't know, you, wait. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it'd be brilliant. If we, we're certainly, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be leaving us very soon and doing a bit of a tour around America with, with the All in the Blood film. Right. Uh, and then it'll be back through Europe. We'll probably visit Energica, so we'll see what we can line up while we're down there. That looks great. And when it's back, will, will I be able to get a go on it? Oh, you'll have to ask TW Steel and Gareth. And no. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, you can. Remember the first time that I got on a motorbike? Just had this incredible sense that I could go anywhere, do anything, and you just want to ride and ride and ride. A custom motorcycle really is a piece of mechanical art. I don't know, we live and breathe this. This is like all we want to do. Why do we customize anything? We like to show off. Engineering and art, whatever the two are, they're, they're, they're always there. But that friction is necessary. But lifestyle and style and motorbikes have always gone together. That's not a new thing. There aren't many ways to express who you are, but a bike is saying, this is who I am.